secure multi-party computation is a subfield of cryptography with the goal of creating methods for parties to jointly compute a function over their inputs while keeping those inputs private. Definition and overview. In an MPC, a given number of participants, P1, P2, Pn, each have private data, respectively D1, D2, Dn. Participants want to compute the value of a public function on that private data, F, while keeping their own inputs secret. For example, suppose we have three parties Alice, Bob and Charlie, with respective inputs X, Y and Z denoting their salaries. They want to find out which of the three salaries is the highest, without revealing to each other how much each of them makes. Mathematically, this translates to them computing. F equals max if there were some trusted outside party, they could each tell their salary to Tony, he could compute the maximum, and tell that number to all of them. The goal of MPC is to design a protocol, where, by exchanging messages only with each other, Alice, Bob, and Charlie can still learn F without revealing who makes what and without having to rely on Tony. They should learn no more by engaging in the protocol than they would learn by interacting with an incorruptible, perfectly trustworthy Tony. In particular, all that the parties can learn is what they can learn from the output and their own input. So in the above example, if the output is Z, then Charlie learns that his Z is the maximum value, whereas Alice and Bob learn that their input is not equal to the maximum, and that the maximum held is equal to Z. The basic scenario can be easily generalized to where the parties have several inputs and outputs, and the function outputs different values to different parties. Informally speaking, the most basic properties that a multi-party computation protocol aims to ensure are input privacy, no information about the private data held by the parties can be inferred from the messages sent during the execution of the protocol. The only information that can be inferred about the private data is whatever could be inferred from seeing the output of the function alone. Correctness any proper subset of adversarial colluding parties willing to share information or deviate from the instructions during the protocol execution should not be able to force honest parties to output an incorrect result. This correctness goal comes in two flavors. Either the honest parties are guaranteed to compute the correct output, or they abort if they find an error. There are a wide range of practical applications, varying from simple tasks such as coin tossing to more complex ones like electronic auctions, electronic voting, or privacy-preserving data mining. A classical example is the millionaire's problem. Two millionaires want to know who is richer in such a way that neither of them learns the net worth of the other. A solution to this situation is essentially to securely evaluate the comparison function. Security definitions A key question to ask is, when is such a multi-party computation protocol secure? In modern cryptography, a protocol can only be deemed to be secure if it comes equipped with a security proof. This is a mathematical proof that the security of the protocol reduces to that of the security of the underlying primitives. But this means we need a definition of what it means for a protocol to be secure. This is hard to formalize. In the case of MPC, since we cannot say that the parties should learn nothing, since they need to learn the output and this depends on the inputs. In addition, we cannot just say that the output must be correct, since the correct output depends on the party's inputs, and we do not know what inputs corrupted parties will use. A formal mathematical definition of security for MPC protocols follows the ideal real-world paradigm described below. The ideal real-world paradigm imagines two worlds. In the ideal world, there exists an incorruptible trusted party to whom each protocol participant sends its input. This trusted party computes the function on its own and sends back the appropriate output to each party. In contrast, in the real-world model, there is no trusted party and all the parties can do is to exchange messages with each other. 
We say a protocol is secure if one can learn no more about each party's private inputs in the real world than one could learn in the ideal world. Since no messages between the parties are exchanged in the ideal world, this security definition implies that the real-world messages that were exchanged cannot have revealed any secret information. We stress that the ideal real-world paradigm provides a simple abstraction of the complexities of MPC that is of great use to anyone using an MPC protocol. Namely, it suffices to construct an application under the pretense that the MPC protocol at its core is actually an ideal execution. If the application is secure in this case, then it is also secure when a real protocol is run instead. The security requirements on an MPC protocol are so stringent that it may seem that it is rarely possible to actually achieve. Surprisingly, in the late 1980s it was already shown that any function can be securely computed, with security for malicious adversaries. This is encouraging news, but it took a long time until MPC became efficient enough to be used in practice. Unconditionally or information theoretically secure MPC is closely related to the problem of secret sharing, and more specifically verifiable secret sharing, which many secure MPC protocols that protect against active adversaries use. Unlike in traditional cryptographic applications, such as encryption or signatures, the adversary in an MPC protocol can be one of the players engaged in the protocol. In fact, in MPC we assume that corrupted parties may collude in order to breach the security of the protocol. If the number of parties in the protocol is n, then the number of parties who can be adversarial is usually denoted by t. The protocols and solutions for the case of t less than n, too, are very different to those where no such assumption is made. This latter case includes the important case of two-party computation where one of the participants may be corrupted, and the general case where an unlimited number of participants are corrupted and collude to attack the honest participants. Different protocols can deal with different adversarial powers. We can categorize adversaries according to how willing they are to deviate from the protocol. There are essentially two types of adversaries, each giving rise to different forms of security. Semi-honest security. In this case, we assume that corrupted parties merely cooperate to gather information out of the protocol, but do not deviate from the protocol specification. This is a naive adversary model, yielding weak security in real situations. However, protocols achieving this level of security prevent inadvertent leakage of information between parties and are thus useful if this is the only concern. In addition, protocols in the semi-honest model are very efficient, and are often an important first step for achieving higher levels of security. Malicious security. In this case, the adversary may arbitrarily deviate from the protocol execution in its attempt to cheat. Protocols that achieve security in this model provide a very high security guarantee. The only thing that an adversary can do in the case of dishonest majority is to cause the honest parties to abort, having detected cheating. If the honest parties do obtain output, then they are guaranteed that it is correct. Of course, their privacy is always preserved. Since security against active adversaries is often only possible at the cost of reducing efficiency one is led to consider a relaxed form of active security called covert security, proposed by Alman and Lindell. Covert security captures more realistic situations where active adversaries are willing to cheat but only if they are not caught. For example, their reputation could be damaged, preventing future collaboration with other honest parties. Thus, protocols that are covertly secure provide mechanisms to ensure that, if some of the parties do not follow the instructions, then it will be noticed with high probability, say 75% or 90%. In a way, covert adversaries are active ones forced to act passively due to external non-cryptographic concerns. This sets a bridge between the two models in the hope of finding protocols which are efficient yet secure enough for practice. 
Like many cryptographic protocols, the security of an MPC protocol can rely on different assumptions. It can be computational or unconditional. The model might assume that participants use a synchronized network, where a message sent at a tick always arrives at the next tick, or that a secure and reliable broadcast channel exists, or that a secure communication channel exists between every pair of participants where an adversary cannot read, modify or generate messages in the channel, etc. The set of honest parties that can execute a computational task is related to the concept of access structure. Adversary structures can be static, i.e., the adversary chooses its victims before the start of the multi-party computation, or dynamic, i.e., it chooses its victims during the course of execution of the multi-party computation. Attaining security against a dynamic adversary is often much harder than security against a static adversary. An adversary structure can be defined as a threshold structure, meaning that it can corrupt or simply read the memory of a number of participants up to some threshold, or be defined as a more complex structure, where it can affect certain predefined subsets of participants, modeling different possible collusions. History Secure computation was formally introduced as secure two-party computation in 1982 by Andrew Yao, the first recipient of the Nuth Prize. It is also referred to as secure function evaluation and is concerned with the question, can two-party computation be achieved more efficiently and under weaker security assumptions than general MPC? The millionaire problem solution gave way to a generalization to multi-party protocols. Increasingly efficient protocols for MPC have been proposed, and MPC can be now used as a practical solution to various real-life problems such as distributed voting, private bidding and auctions, sharing of signature or decryption functions and private information retrieval. The first large-scale and practical application of multi-party computation took place in Denmark in January 2008. Protocols used there are major differences between the protocols proposed for two-party computation and multi-party computation. Two-party computation The two-party setting is particularly interesting, not only from an application's perspective but also because special techniques can be applied in the two-party setting which do not apply in the multi-party case. Indeed, secure multi-party computation was first presented in the two-party setting. The original work is often cited as being from one of the two papers of Yao, although the papers do not actually contain what is now known as YAO's protocol. YAO's basic protocol is secure against semi-honest adversaries and is extremely efficient in terms of number of rounds, which is constant and independent of the target function being evaluated. The function is viewed as a Boolean circuit, with inputs in binary of fixed length. A Boolean circuit is a collection of gates connected with three different types of wires. Circuit input wires, circuit output wires and intermediate wires. Each gate receives two input wires and it has a single output wire which might be fan out. Plane evaluation of the circuit is done by evaluating each gate in turn, assuming the gates have been lexicographically ordered. The gate is represented as a truth table such that for each possible pair of bits the table assigns a unique output bit, which is the value of the output wire of the gate. The results of the evaluation are the bits obtained in the circuit output wires. Liao explained how to garble a circuit so that two parties, sender and receiver, can learn the output of the circuit and nothing else. At a high level, the sender prepares the garbled circuit and sends it to the receiver, who obliviously evaluates the circuit, learning the encodings corresponding to both his and the sender's output. He then just sends back the sender's encodings, allowing the sender to compute his part of the output. The sender sends the mapping from the receiver's output encodings to bits to the receiver, allowing the receiver to obtain their output. In more detail, the garbled circuit is computed as follows. The main ingredient is a double-keyed symmetric encryption scheme. 
Given a gate of the circuit, each possible value of its input wires is encoded with a random number. The values resulting from the evaluation of the gate at each of the four possible pair of input bits are also replaced with random labels. The garbled truth table of the gate consists of encryptions of each output label using its input's labels as keys. The position of these four encryptions in the truth table is randomized so no information on the gate is leaked. To correctly evaluate each garbled gate the encryption scheme has the following two properties. Firstly, the ranges of the encryption function under any two distinct keys are disjoint. The second property says that it can be checked sufficiently whether a given ciphertext has been encrypted under a given key. With these two properties the receiver, after obtaining the labels for all circuit input wires, can evaluate each gate by first finding out which of the four ciphertexts has been encrypted with his label keys and then decrypting to obtain the label of the output wire. This is done obliviously as all the receiver learns during the evaluation or encodings of the bits. The sender's input bits can be just sent as encodings to the evaluator, whereas the receiver's encodings corresponding to his input bits are obtained via a 1 out of 2 oblivious transfer protocol. A 1 out of 2 OT protocol enables the sender, in possession of two values C1 and C2, to send the one requested by the receiver in such a way that the sender does not know what value has been transferred and the receiver only learns the queried value. If one is considering malicious adversaries, further mechanisms to ensure correct behavior of both parties need to be provided. By construction it is easy to show security for the sender, as all the receiver can do is to evaluate a garbled circuit that would fail to reach the circuit output wires if he deviated from the instructions. The situation is very different on the sender's side. For example, he may send an incorrect garbled circuit that computes a function revealing the receiver's input. This would mean that privacy no longer holds, but since the circuit is garbled the receiver would not be able to detect this. Multi-party protocols Most MPC protocols, as opposed to two PC protocols, make use of secret sharing. In the secret sharing-based methods, the parties do not play special roles. Instead the data associated to each wire is shared amongst the parties, and a protocol is then used to evaluate each gate. The function is now defined as a circuit over GF, as opposed to the binary circuits used for Yao. Such a circuit is called an arithmetic circuit in the literature, and it consists of addition and multiplication gates, where the values operated on are defined over GF. Secret sharing allows one to distribute a secret among a number of parties by distributing shares to each party. Three types of secret sharing schemes are commonly used, Shamir secret sharing, replicated secret sharing and additive secret sharing. In all three cases the shares are random elements of GF that add up to the secret in GF, intuitively. Security steams because any non-qualifying set shares looks randomly distributed. All three secret sharing schemes are linear, so the sum of two shared secrets, or multiplication a secret by a public constant, can be done locally. Thus linear functions can be evaluated for free. Replicated secret sharing schemes are usually associated with passively secure MPC systems consisting of three parties, of which at most one can be adversarial, such as used in the ShareMind system. MPC systems based on Shamir secret sharing are generally associated with systems which can tolerate up to T adversaries out of N, so-called threshold systems. In the case of information theoretic protocols actively secure protocols can be realized with Shamir secret sharing if T less than N3, whilst passively secure ones are available if D less than N2. In the case of computationally secure protocols one can tolerate a threshold of T less than N2 for actively secure protocols. A practical system adopting this approach is the VIFF framework.
Additive secret sharing is used when one wants to tolerate a dishonest majority, i.e., t less than n, in which case we can only obtain MPC protocols with abort. This later type is typified by the SPDZ and of the Tinyote protocol. Other protocols Virtual Party Protocol is a protocol which uses virtual parties and complex mathematics to hide the identity of the parties. Secure some protocols allow multiple cooperating parties to compute some function of their individual data without revealing the data to one another. In 2014 a model of fairness in secure computation in which an adversarial party that aborts on receiving output is forced to pay a mutually predefined monetary penalty has been described for the Bitcoin network or for fair lottery. Scalable MPC. Recently, several multi party computation techniques have been proposed targeting resource efficiency for large networks. Although much theoretical progress has been made to achieve scalability, practical progress is slower. In particular, most known schemes suffer from either poor or unknown communication and computation costs in practice.